for one, Samsung versus Jin Air. And come on, just get the bar ban over with. It's like a stake just through Doa's heart. Just do it. There. Fine. <laughs> now I can move on from the pain. <laughs> You've already moved to acceptance. Your your stages of grief went quite quickly there, though. That's right. Well, the <laughs> anger is always with me. So Gragas, TF, Rek'Sai, the other bands as well. That uh, TF banned out against Crown after he had some very good games on that last week. Yeah, I don't want to deal with those pick compositions that Samsung seems to be honing. Instead, maybe you want to deal with their fast push style. But again, Samsung, a team that has been executing game plans way better this season than last season. They come in with a, a clarity of thought and a clarity of strategy that was really absent in their bottom of the table finish in the spring. Yeah. So they've done a lot of work and it's it's pretty apparent. It feels like a lot of it's been uh, sort of fast pushing type stuff, but they've been showing that they can play a few other things as well too. So I think we're seeing, we're seeing the Samsung team gradually starting to pick up steam. Yes. I would agree. I, I don't expect great things out of them this season, but on the horizon, I think this is a roster that is starting to come into its own and at least present a threat and have some innovative qualities. And yeah. The Samsung Blue coach was the one who stayed with his organization, and Samsung Blue, by far the most innovative team in League of Legends last year, pioneering a lot of the metagame, particularly advanced lane swap tactics. They were really ahead of the curve on that one. Sure enough, Janair picking up Azir and Evelyn for their first two. Evelyn really kind of arriving in a huge way in Korea in the summer season. Thanks, Clear Love. Yeah. Oh, Nidalee. Oh, okay. All right. So Eve has been a longtime jungle Nidalee player. Goes for a slower start, but a really high amount of damage late game with this. So it'll be interesting to uh, see him bring this back. We haven't seen it for quite a while. Now, there's been there's been Nidalee played in China and Europe. Um, I'm not a fan, I have to say, because my problem with Nidalee is that, yes, she's great at skirmishing early on, but her damage isn't enough late game to offset the fact that she's so squishy. And in a lot of team fights late game against these big AOE CC tanks, she just ends up kind of running around in circles because if she gets hit by anything, she just instantly dies. Yeah. Any crowd control whatsoever. And Trace may be returning now to that Rumble that he has played every game of the season so far. Well, the Rumble certainly still a strong pick right now in the meta. Maybe Vayne going along with that. We'll see if there's a last-minute switch. Looks like GBM will be playing that Azir in mid lane, though. We've got a lot of AoE protection for the Vayne here, so this is a nice composition to have Pilot on. Yeah. So the final two picks over to Samsung here in game number one. Uh, Jana would round this out real nicely for Jin Air, I feel. Uh, just another layer of protection. And Sweet's been playing mostly Alistair this season, so he's going to have to go with something a little bit different tonight. Hmm, so possibly the LeBlanc for Crown. Maybe the top lane rise, too. Something that's been played in China. Yeah, we haven't seen too much otherwise. And okay. we're going to see it today, though. All right, cool. Kuve probably taking that top lane rise then. Yes. So top lane rise. I'm not really sold on new rise. Uh, Many aren't. He's, because of the way that his stacking works now and how obvious it is, it's really kind of telegraphed when rise comes in to hit you with the trade. So it becomes very predictable for ganking as well because you know when he's going to walk up. Uh, so, I, you know, I think it's just a difficult champion to get into the late game where he really has a lot of that damage. Now, fortunately for him, he's going to be in a situation where Rumble is a very juicy target for a rune prison. Whoa, Vagar locked in. Interesting. Okay, and I would imagine this is a Vagar support, support then, yep. yeah. So Vagar okay. support coming back. Huh. Now, after those nerfs to his event horizon, a bit surprised because of the delay, but we'll, well see they. What they buffed it again. It's it's still bad, but it's, I mean, it's never going to be as good as instant, but it's it's not terrible right now. It's just not very good. But, but, they've got great siege with this still, because if we think about what Event Horizon could do, how, they, how players used to use it was to engage, right? You flash and catch somebody out with the edge of Event Horizon. Right. Now with the cast time, that's a lot harder to do, but what you can still do with it is create massive zones next to turrets where people can't defend, and... You can protect Vayne with it. You can peel with it now. So it's still a super strong stun, AOE stun, 
And if you consider Equalizer, Emperor's Divide, and Event Horizon, Pilot has so much room to move in a team fight. He really does. And I mean, even the Vagar ult against Ryze, Nidalee, and LeBlanc is going to be doing decent damage, even coming from a support player, too. So it's, it's an interesting pick. I think it could really work. Yeah, also, uh, the Vagar good against the AP solo laners, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the other advantages that you can have is that yeah. your ult will do more damage to them. Right, so, exactly. Yeah, just having that. Uh, uh, you have a couple good targets, as well as Evelyn, who will also be building heavy AP this game. Well, it makes it a bit risky for LeBlanc to come or in Italy, if she rather, can excuse me. lose half her health. We will see if it works out for Jynair as we go into game number one. It's time, guys. Who takes it? Let's find out. All right, well, welcome to Summoner's Rift. Samsung versus Jynair. And I'm really glad we're seeing the support figure again. It is very composition dependent, like don't jump on solo queue and start playing it you know, immediately. It works, it, in theory, it works very well for this team, but it's good to see again. Yeah, I was one of my favorite champs to play. Uh, Ping's going down the try brush right there. We'll see what Sweden Pilot want to do. They are just going to walk in there, and Fury will not taste the rainbow quite yet. <laughs> you might taste it later, though. A <laughs> rainbow's only going to get more powerful. So, uh, this Nidalee has some really good ganking targets, especially top lane. Trace is going to have to be very careful, because if he just gets rune prisoned, it sets up a Nidalee spear and an all-in extremely easily. Mm. So they have to be very careful, especially because Azir also not going to be able to move around that much Many in the early game. If he gets a chain landed on him by LeBlanc, another easy gank opportunity for Eve. So, Man, Ryze's feet are huge. You ever yeah. notice that? They are downright gigantic. He's you like a like, hobbit. You can fit like three heads in one of his boots. <laughs> Kind of looks like he has a rolling pin, too. It's like if we could have a Chef Rise skin where he's got like a rolling pin instead of Baker, a roller thing. Baker like Rise. Yeah. Makes bread rise. <laughs> uh, well, who gets the Krugs? <laughs> going to be Eve. So I'm very curious what they're going to do with this because the last time we saw Samsung in game one against the Ku Tigers, they really had a surprising composition. And it was polished. It looked really practiced, really well executed by them. Now, they fell apart later on. They couldn't go for a full best of three with having that same level of execution. Oh, hi. Wraith being annoying here with these wolves, getting the pulverize onto Trace there. Yeah. On the run now, he went very deep for this. Yeah, just annoying things you can do in, in, with Alistair in one of these lane swaps. And yep. you start juggling on that weak side, and you open yourself up to those kind of a play. Those kind of plays, rather. Sweet still sticking around in the top side, actually. They did get the freeze, so they really want to deny Kuve here. Well, they're doing a decent job of it so far. Still Trace with the same CS as well after a little bit of jungle following. Finally getting back to lane now. There we go. Kuve getting a little bit of CS there. I'm really curious to see if this Rise is going to be able to do you know, substantial damage in the late game. You should be able to, but will he be able to get in and actually do it, though? Yeah, that's, that's the question. With how much peel Jyn Air has, one wonders, right? Yeah. Well, if you look at, like, just Sivir and Rise by themselves, too, and Event Horizon, the zoning that Jyn Air has, they're just not going to be able to get close enough to use their abilities. Yeah, I, I agree. And the poke is a little bit limited. Obviously, you do have distortion from LeBlanc and the Nidalee Spears, but it's going to take a while for Nidalee to get a meaningful amount of ability power this game. Wraith again going in. Oh, man. Chaser has to be so careful. He could have died right there. Yeah, especially with Eve right there, too. A spear plus a little bit of damage from Alistar might have done it. Looks like GBM's going to go back and pick something up. Pilot, though, getting a little bit of time to farm here in the top lane now. Yeah, sweet playing up in topside for quite a long time, just denying some CS by body blocking. Right there, remember, Ryze did have some changes. Oh, yeah. that's annoying, but not a ton of damage yet. You do use a lot of mana doing that, but if you can deny a bit of CS, it's not bad. Oh, Wraith up here just to keep Kuve safe while they push forward. 
But the, considering they didn't get the 1v1, this is actually very good for Gen Air. Obviously, they can avoid what is, I assume, a very awkward lane with new Vagar and Vayne. Yeah. Here comes Chaser into this 2v2 up in top. Not able to really find an opportunity yet, though. There was a gank attempt down bot lane by Eve as well, but Trace was able to fend that off easily. If you look at the minimap. Yeah, Samsung has to be super careful. They're very nervous right now, especially with this kind of telegraphing. Yep. <laughs> well, they catch Wraith. A little bit of damage onto him here, Pilot. Condemns him back against the wall, but no real big follow-up. In fact, uh, Sweet taking quite a bit of damage there. Yeah, Chase are going to go ahead and check for wards right in that tri brush, make sure that everything is clear, and then head right back to jungling. He's going to get pinged out as he goes to the Krugs. Saw him, so likely place for him to go is Evelyn. They also have those deep wards they got in earlier. So I'm going to suss him out. And otherwise, no real ganks yet, but Jin Air just looking for a little bit of an easier early game. And Kuve definitely not getting the same amount of CS that he would pick up in that solo lane either, so it's a nice denial tactic as well. Yep. And able to push it back into turret to try to deny even more. There it goes. Yep. Into the turret. And they keep corralling Wraith. A little bit of damage onto him. You gotta put the bull in the corral. That's, That's what you right. do. He's just role playing. <laughs> Works out. Except Leprechauns didn't put bulls in corrals, unfortunately. <laughs> Where is the cowboy Vagar skin? It doesn't really work puts with the lore, up the, does it? That puts up the corral. That's, That's true. That's what I want. Like Ranch Hand Vagar or something? That's right, Ranch Hand Vagar. Cowboy Vagar. You can wear a big cowboy hat. I mean, it fits, it fits yep. the big hat <laughs> thing, doesn't it? It certainly does. Yeah, you can just have like a lasso. And he like throws out and it gets really big. That'd be cool. Well, lane swap finally moving on through, and it's freeing up Vagar now to do a little bit of roaming, get some wards in, and check some brushes. Fury's getting a lot of nice farm of the bot lane, too, during all of this. Yeah, he's got to recall, though, which will mean that Pilot's just going to catch oh, right yeah. back up. I suppose. And they're not going to try and make a play onto the dragon with Chaser on the top side. So it's like just some more farming going on as the duo lanes will meet each other for the first time. Not even level six yet, so pretty early time to swap for Trace. Hmm. Must be feeling good. Kuve just with the tier, of course, in the top lane. He's going to have to be a little bit careful about how he deals with this rumble. Yeah, I mean, he is a level up for now anyway. So he's got that little bit of an edge. Maybe that's uh, maybe that's why they switched a bit early, just an opportunity where Trace maybe could come into that 1v1 a little bit stronger. Also, just the tier power trough as well. Right. Oh, action coming in onto Crown here. Crown trying to get away with that passive. He actually goes deeper into the jungle. There we go. Chaser flashing over the wall. Crown still in a lot of trouble here. He's got no more summoners. Oh, nice spear onto GBM, though. They get first blood. GBM takes it, and Eve not able to get enough damage in follow up. Meanwhile, some more action in bot lane. Sweet just having a support duel with Wraith. And right there, Crown didn't use the Ignite. Both summoners used for GBM, but they do actually pick up that kill. Still a lot of all-in potential when Crown gets back into lane. Definitely not the end of things, as GBM's going to be really vulnerable to Nidalee coming back in, and uh, Eve using a Flash as well. So he has to play still quite cautiously, and we'll see if Samsung switches their approach up to camping this mid lane. He certainly could. You know, take away the blue buff, too. Nice take away. Yeah, they may pay Samsung. for it, though. Dual lane coming up. We'll see if they can oh. catch anybody. Oh, close one. All right, Eve gets it. So hair off there, 14 HP. One last auto will take it off the map. And now, Crown's back with nearly a Marilla Namacon. Yeah. GBM looking okay, too. Decent poking, of course, coming from that is here. But yeah, you're right. With the summoners down, he's going to need to play it a little bit more carefully. They don't really have any wards, too. Oh, action in the bot lane. Pilot taking some big hits, as did Sweet. But yeah, it seems like Jyn is going to need to ward this mid lane a little bit better. They know GBM's going to be kind of vulnerable. Well, Pilot is at an item disadvantage as well, just with the Vamp Scepter and the Longsword right now. Not having the Bilgewater Cutlass completed, much less the Blade of the Ruin King. So now that Fury has a BF Sword, 
Gotta keep your eyes on that one. A GBM. blue steal though for GBM. And it's going in and reacting on the other side of the map. And so they get the blue buff in the end. And now what that means is no blue buff for Crown uh, because Italy got the last one taken away from Jenner. So that actually worked out quite well for Jenner in the end. Yeah. And Pilot's still, still doing okay CS-wise. I do wonder why they switched back so early. I mean, Kuve and Trace going pretty even in terms of farm now. Uh, Jenner needs to start looking to make some plays around this dragon and start thinking about securing that. Trace with the haunting guys right now. Once his TP is back up, Kuve's TP is up, however, but they haven't had the gumption to make an attempt on the bottom side of the map. It's bad ability. It's not the most damage with that, I guess, just with the tier, but... Might have an opportunity. That turret taking a lot of damage, though. But I mean, you'd, you'd expect the Alistair Siver lane to push in the uh, the Vayne Vigar. There's not a lot that you can do to stop that duo. Yeah, the Vigar is not going to add much, and yeah. just the sustain to from Alistair means that you can just continue pushing forward, and it heals all your minions also. So it just keeps things moving, keeps your minions topped off as they go into the turret. Pretty much. And here we go, dive coming in. They don't know Chaser's there. Chaser will be found right now, though. There's a pulverize immediately from Wrath. Chaser in a little bit of trouble. Advice Horizon comes in. Fury locked against the wall. Pilot doing a lot of damage there. Fury forced a flash out of it. Teleport coming down for Trace as well. Here comes Azir GBM. from the top. Now GBM could come over the wall. A little bit of damage on the right. They get the flash out of Kube as oh. well. Oh, Fury comes back in, and Ground gets a kill as well. So out of nowhere, two kills for Samsung, and they're going to turn right onto that dragon. Wow, it really looked like Jin Air was had their number, and they yeah. weren't going to fall to that dive. But at the end, they baited out. Fury tosses a boomerang blade in, and Crown goes in with a quick distortion. Well, and they, they overcommit while being low in HP and just fall to the burst. They all walked right through that narrow little choke and just a good got play from AOE Samsung. down. Yeah. Good turn. And Jin Air, too. They, they didn't look like they were going to over-pursue that. They had already broken off their pursuit. Chaser takes a lot of damage right off the bat, but a good event horizon. And Fury just taking so much. Has to flash over the wall. There's an equalizer to cut everybody off. Now, GBM coming down. He's just trying to get some poke on the exit. They're not committed to this fight anymore. If you take a look, they start to turn around. And look at that double distortion coming in. Wow. Nice play from Crown. Yeah. And that should mean a, uh, a Fiend's pretty soon here for him. Oh, yeah. Morel and Namagon, rather. Oops. Samsung still uh, not taking too much of a gold lead here as Chaser attempts to sneak in. No equalizer yet. The question is, is he going to wait long enough to have that up? Kuve's flash is down. Seems unlikely he'll be able to escape it as long as the equalizer is available. He's waiting for Kuve to come up a little bit more. He's playing pretty safe, though. I mean, he only has that one Warden River. Yeah, Trace trying to bait a little bit there, but I don't think Kuve is falling for it. Chaser really looking for this one, but Kuve has his wits about him. Knows that this can only mean bad things, and just stays back, happy to farm under his turret, get that rod of ages and continue stacking that tier up. He's playing as passively as he needs to. Rise is one of those champions with a very late item power spike. Yep. Chaser really wants something here. And can they maybe dive this? It looks like they think they can. Going in equalizer down on Akube. That's a lot of damage. Trace just roasting him, flashing away, and he barely makes it out with his life. So a successful dive. Summoner is used by Trace, but it worked out. And Trace not getting that kill, though, was yeah. taken away by Chaser, which is a little bit problematic. Uh, it would have been obviously nice Ooh. for that investment to take him out, but still going to at least win him some farm because they pushed a big wave under that was denied and delay some of these items. Now Kuve also having to go for a Null Magic Mantle just because of the burst that Trace has onto him. And it's a... Uh, it can, wow, there's a turret on the bottom side. Yeah, taken down already by Samsung. Nice little lead early on in game number one. Jimmy playing a little bit scared right now. Well, he kind of has to with no real wards down the bottom side. 
You can't really push too far ahead. This lack of wave clear and the threat of the Nidalee Spear Poke coming in is really driving Jin Air off the towers. Trace has to come down to the bottom side and help as Vayne and Vagar search for safety in the top lane instead. And now that Kuve bought that magic resist, pretty much useless up there. He's gonna be trading with his Vayne at the very least. True enough, Tracer manages to uh, grab the ground before Eve can take it away. So silver lining there at the end. Well, Event Horizon, they catch Kuve. Oh, Decent Kube. amount of damage, actually. Sweet, use that ult. That was very close pilot. Taking some hits as well, too. But. It was a nice combo. He yeah. chained it very well into the Condemn against the turret. So Kuve has to back off after that. No TP to get back into lane. And now the lane swap going back in. Wraith and Fury have finished their job, taking out the tier one on the bottom side. Now it's time to take it out on the top side as well. Wraith getting some more wards in the jungle just to make sure they know where Evelyn is. A lot of wards. Crown gets his blue buff this time. It's a nice improvement over the last situation he was in with GBM stealing that. Ooh, Wraith's, Wraith gets spotted. And Jin Air looks like they're ready for a possible dive up here in top lane. They've got enough people here that yeah, you Samsung can't just the, has to kind of siege, siege it a bit. Yeah, you can't dive the Vagar, though. That's yeah. not something that's going to happen. Too much stun underneath the turret. No reliable way to get back out. That would be a very risky proposition. And Samsung really holding on right now. They have this big time scaling with their composition, but they haven't really suffered too bad in terms of the early losses, having that gold lead, getting a couple of kills already, and Crown just continuing to harass GBM. Yep. I'd be interested to see the CS again now at this point. Oh, Fury just <laughs> spell shields his way through it. That works. I can't keep sieging the turret after that. He would be alone in that task. Yeah. So themes for GBM. Still a little bit behind in CS, though. You know, again, he has to just play so carefully. Really can't move up in lane right now at all. I mean, they know where Nidalee is, I suppose, but still. There's another tower down, so more gold in favor of Samsung. And two towers to zero as Fury and Wraith just know where to be on the map. But this is where Sam a lot of Samsung's power came from in the qualifiers and then earlier on this season is that... Fury is very good at quickly removing outer turrets. And yep. that really helps get his team over the hump, helps him get an early gold lead. Well, this kind of uh, faster pressure, split pushing style for Samsung, you know, so far seems to be really working for them. They they seem to have kind of finally found an identif identity that they're comfortable with it. They have confidence that we haven't seen before. Right, and they're using it in a lot of interesting ways too, just because they've, they've identified that Fury is good at this and that Eve and Fury work together well to take down turrets. A lot of this game, Eve has spent uh, just trying to zone out enemies from towers as we see a dragon going down right here, just totally not contested as everyone recalling. Yeah, second dragon already for Samsung with uh, no contest at all from Jin Air. Wow. Yeah, Jin Air starting to fall behind a little bit alarmingly at this point. And this is part of Jin Air's problem where we talk about they don't really know their power spikes. Yep. Oh, have they caught Wraith here? Wraith trapped in that event horizon. Fury, Kuve, the rest of the team still there to help him out there. So he's able to make it out. Oh, Fury getting a lot of nice auto attacks on the Trace there, getting a little bit too close with that Flame Spitter. And now they're just gripping up his five and threatening this mid lane. They want that outer ring. Yeah, oh, Kuve trapped again a little bit, but where's the follow up? There we go, over the wall. <laughs> Whoops, Pilot pushed away there. Wraith in a little bit of trouble now, and Jin Air turns on it. There's a heal. Can they get him? Alt used by Evelyn, even. And Wraith, just so tanky, survives here. Pilot takes a lot of damage. We'll block doing it. GBM gets in the back line, pushes everybody forward, but it's a kill anyway for Kuve. Crown coming in, gets another oh. one. Nice spear from Eve for that kill on the Pilot as he tried to flee. And Samsung just seems to have all the answers for Jin Air this game. And they just keep rolling when you have yeah. someone like Eve uh, and Fury, when they work together to take down the outer ring, you can accelerate the growth of some of your scaling laners like Kuve's Rise. And they just keep moving forward. And if you're 
Jinair, you can't be walking next to those towers. Wow, two turrets here. That's absolutely huge, but they took devastating losses, and Jinair not on the same page during that engagement. GBM thought he saw an opportunity when the Event Horizon went down to go ahead and get an Azir wall reversal, but there was no follow-up. Jinair simply too low in terms of HP to actually finish off those kills. Yeah, this is a bit over-eager by uh, GBM as we see him go in. Yeah, and there's an Equalizer. Doesn't do a whole lot besides force out the Sivir ult. And Wraith, they commit a lot to killing him, and they can't get him down due to all the heals coming in. Summoner heal as well as the Nidalee heal. Pilot takes a huge amount of damage from a Boomerang Blade. And who's supposed to kill these people that you just shoved in, his, in the Jinera Green Wing's face? No one is high, is high enough. And walking right there against Nidalee sets up a very easy spear skill shot. Yeah, pretty much. It's like three people there. It just happened the one left was low enough to get killed by a two. So pretty huge lead now. 6,000 gold at 20 minutes for Samsung. And they have really played this out extremely well. Well, we saw the same thing against Ku Tigers in game one. They True. had a great strategy coming in. They really looked crisp. But when it came to playing out a full best of three, this team just, their compositions weren't so great in games two and games three. Uh, when it, oh, oh, he nice gets the grab. red buff. When it wow. went off script, it didn't work so well. So with the right pick and ban phase, I think Jenner can dissect this and, and bounce back in the second and third games here. But Samsung showing that they really have a lot more to them this season. I love that we see so much variation from them in terms of their picks and bans week to week. There's a lot of evolution. Yeah, and I mean, still overall, too, we see Samsung moving in a positive trajectory. You know, they have to start somewhere, and being able to win one game in a best of three is better than not winning any, which is what they did pretty much all of last season. Yeah, and I think the teams will just learn to play wave clear against Samsung, especially a wave clear AD carry so you can just match up with Fury better because when they get the fast push started, that's when they get the lanes that are not so strong rolling and can develop gold leads where that scaling comes a lot quicker. Well, there goes his ear turret. And Chaser. Been trying to get things done with this Evelyn all game, but has had a, a couple decent ganks, but overall not able to put enough pressure on, you know? Indeed, and there goes a lot of damage from that rise as he clears out the minion wave. It's not yep. too dangerous yet, but he is definitely getting up there. He works his way towards the Seraph's Embrace, takes a little bit of a detour for the Merc Treads, just wants some more magic resist against the two AP solo laners. Well, Samsung with all the pressure right now onto Jinair, their top lane might be pushing back. But this tier two and bot is in trouble. Event Horizon not really doing anything to save it. Yeah, I'm not sure about this Vagar pick. It really hasn't done a lot for them. Uh, they can't fight in the 2v2 because the Vayne and Vagar are so weak. It seems like if they, if it had been a more even game, maybe that would have worked. Like on paper, it made sense to a certain extent. Well, but it caused the disparity because as soon as they switch back into the 2v2, they, they started losing turrets left mm. and right because they couldn't do anything to trade or to defend the towers. So not really sold on the Vagar here, especially Vayne Vagar. That's a, it's not, not much you can do in a 2v2 situation. True enough. Hmm. Well, before it was just GBM with all the interesting picks. Now, Sweet wants to get in on it. <laughs> well, we'll never get to see his bard. Nope. Well, maybe we will not. next game. Samsung's on on the uh, red side in the next game, so they'll have to ban Callista. So maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe they'll get really cocky and they'll be just like, we can let it through, no worries. We'll get to see it. Would be nice. Well, if you're Jinair right now, you know, what do you do? How do you, you know, can you scale well enough that if you just sit back and try to keep whatever you have left upright, that you can maybe come back late? I think you should just do what the Koo Tigers did and try and bait Samsung into making poor decisions. Well, like that is kind of the Achilles heel right now for Samsung, too. Is that, that they, if yeah. You, if you just wait long enough, they're still relatively new, and they may make a mistake that you could right. just end the game off of. 
That's going to be your best bet. All going for the third dragon in a row right now, but Jin Air wants to maybe try to punish this. There it is, three dragons, Trace waiting, and Jin Air already backing away. So just going to let them have that. Continues to be a pretty clean game for Samsung. Oh, Crown coming in, doing a lot of damage to GBM. Wow, that was very close. Yeah, one combo. Pretty much taking him down to 50% HP, and Samsung thinking that, thinking it maybe they're lucky. Made out a kill here at the Baron. They have a lot of vision around the pit already, and certainly significant amounts of damage. Well, it seems like Samsung, whoa, GBM getting really low, but it seems like Oh, Wrath coming from behind. They push back Chaser. Pilot there to do a decent amount of damage. GBM have to, had to escape to the base for now. Wraith, a little bit awkward, has to use his ultimate. GBM is forced back, however, and they do get the minion wave pressed up to the inhibitor turret. It seems like uh, it seems like Samsung could just sort of bait Baron as much as they want at this point. Yes, they absolutely could. They have the engage for it. They have the crowd control for it. So. They have that opportunity should they take it. Certainly the pick potential is definitely there as well. Huge amounts of burst. And very little MR. Trace just finishing that Abyssal Scepter. Yeah. And Kube really starting to get rolling now. Yeah, it does take about 28, 30 minutes to, to get Rise on track with a fully stacked Rod of Ages and the Seraph's Embrace. So it's a slow process, but once it goes, it gets pretty big. As you notice, Eve has that Seraph's Embrace himself already, and still no Aegis. Uh, Chaser working towards it, but he's still a little ways off. Seems like, you know, GBM is doing okay, but he's just gonna have such a hard time doing damage at this point. Yeah, besides it's just a little bit of poke. Yep. The Luden's Echo. It is, it is dangerous, though, for Samsung to go too aggressively after this Baron, considering that there's a lot of AP threats on the enemy team. And they aren't very tanky at this point until Rise starts to buy some more defensive stats later in the game. Well, Janair trying to get a little bit more vision back around the Baron pit now. It's nice to see Eve's Nidalee back, too. His spears are so good, as you can see. Yeah, he was the principal Nidalee player yeah. in Korea. And it has been played other places. Again, I'm not the biggest fan of it. I think that it really lacks in the late game, especially against champions like Sejuani or Gragas, where you're just never going to get that damage off. But oh, Trace may be getting caught here with the slight damage. There's the spear coming in. Fury flashes ahead for that one. Equalizer used. Trace still alive. No, not anymore. Crown gets the kill there. Kube taking some damage from Chaser, but it looks like he's OK for now. GBM coming in from behind. They help Pilot pick up his first kill here, Crown trying to escape now, so losses on both sides as far as the top laners are concerned. Way too over aggressive of Samsung right there. Fury flashing forward yeah. to attempt to pick up that kill, and they end up paying quite heavily for it, just in terms of summoner spells at the very least. There's only a one-for-one one trade. They're still going to try and go for this Baron. I... Oh, GBM getting nearly blown up by Crown. Oh, boy. If that chain had actually connected, I think GBM would be gone. Either way, it scares Samsung off the Baron anyway. If they didn't have enough HP to do the Baron, of course, Wraith without the Unbreakable Will also creating additional problems. Does have a Talisman of Ascension now. So looking for that additional speed boost for the Engage. They don't really have a way to lock someone down besides Chains or a Rune Prison. So that is somewhat critical to their attempts to create picks. Either way, though, it seems like we're kind of witnessing the slow Anaconda-style strangulation of the map by Samsung onto Janair. Yep, certainly a lot more wards. Also now Void Staff done for Eve. That is a very important purchase. Coming right as that Aegis is finished as well, so he's just staying one step ahead. And all the dragons going over to Samsung, too. They're a minute and a half, they're going to be knocking on the doorstep of that five dragon buff. And that is, that is probably where the game ends for Jyn Air. Yep, pretty much. Oh, Fury really just trying to get in and do damage. Picking Yomu's Ghost Blade is his second big item this game. 
It depends on the player. Prey does that as well on Sivir. Uh, some players prefer that, some players prefer Static Shiv. So the active can be quite good in taking down turrets, though. And if you're confident in your abilities to use it at the right moment in a team fight, it provides more burst damage. That's true. If you have the wave clear coming from other champions, too, you're fine with it. Yeah, fortunately for uh, Sivir, you have plenty of wave clear, whether you have a no, ship or whatever. So you have, in a way, more itemization options than many other AD carries do at this point in the game. Trade-off is at low range. Low, low range. Very right. low range. But it's worth it because she has the best ult uh. for an AD carry. What, you don't like Crystal and Arrow? That's my favorite ult for an AD yeah, carry. Yeah, but that requires a skill shot. I like skill shots. But it's not as reliable as just hitting R and running at somebody. That is true. I do like Enchanted Crystal Arrow very much, and I think it's an excellent ability, but Sivir's ultimate is pretty ridiculous for competitive play. Yeah. Well, it just gives the player so much time to focus on positioning instead of aiming an ult, you know? Yep, this is Samson playing this exactly right. Threaten the Baron, stop Jyn Air from baiting it while soloing it with the AD carry. Perfect distribution of resources. Wow. Fury's gonna take some damage, but whatever. I think that's okay when you get your fourth dragon out of it and your AD carry still remains untouched. I have so many wards right there too. It's just no real threat for Fury. Fury gonna sweep through the enemy jungle while he's at it and start moving on this minion wave at the same time. And there's a heal coming in from Nidalee, so he doesn't have any lifesteal yet, but he has a high AP jungler to help him out. With a heal. Yeah, he's jungle Nidalee is. Definitely still looking good right now. I don't know if it'll look good against every composition, but against this, it's working out well. It's really bad against some of the more engaged heavy junglers. But you'll also notice that Samsung did ban out Sejuani and Gragas this game. It's true. Those were two of their bans, and one presumes it's because they wanted to play Nidalee without getting Nidalee exploded instantly. But I don't know if Nidalee's worth it to play if you have to ban out both of those just to get her. If you're Eve and you happen to be a Nidalee expert, perhaps there's an argument to be made and you can take over the game. Otherwise, it's a pretty big commitment. Yeah, it's definitely a big commitment, and you really have to believe in your Nidalee player that they will take over the game, because if they don't, then it, the entire pick band phase just falls to pieces. As far as solo queue is concerned, Nidalee is the vein of the jungle, I think. Well, Nidalee you can make place in solo queue, because you could always find somebody who's just derping around on their own and <laughs> kill them. Why not play Talon at that point? Well, because Talon's not a jungler. Yeah, but... You want to just get kills on people? Just play Talon. Hide in the fog of war. Alt. Blow people up. But then you have to be a dirty laner, though. Nobody likes the dirty laners. It's true. We junglers. Actually, everybody <laughs> likes it. Everybody likes that in solo queue. <laughs> we junglers don't don't debase ourselves with the lanes. <laughs> just kind of show up every once in a while when you need it. That's right. Still, Janair doing it. Uh, yeah, they're doing an okay job of holding on right here with these Azir turrets. And Samsung is just not tanky enough to not take insane amounts of damage because Kube's building a Void Staff now. Elixir of Sorcery on to Eve's Nidalee also. Still though. They pretty much just have to play around 5th Dragon because they can't get chunked out and survive a Baron fight. Yeah, we're probably just going to see a lot of positioning around the map until then, unless Crown decides to come in. Oh, they did see him because of that ward. Try and catch him in the event horizon. Not going to work. That's hard to do. Oh, there goes the Azir turret. Exciting times. Yep. Oh, boy. Sweet may have gotten oh, almost caught. Gets the event horizon off just in time. Still poked pretty heavily, and that's going to give Samsung the opportunity to clear a lot of these wards that still remain. Or the couple that still remain. This is all just a prolonged dance for Dragon number five. Yeah. For Samsung, where they'll finally be able to force a fight without taking an obscene amount of damage on an objective. 
That's been oh, very well played they, out, too. Looks like they saw maybe Pilot go back. Nope. Oh, boy. It's a brush hide. Okay. They're deciding not to. It was almost really exciting there for a moment. They really want to just get a pick and see if they can get an inhibitor out of it. Yes, that is the goal, or maybe even take some sort of turret eventually, but it's just, it's so hard with this team composition to do anything, yeah. especially when the Rise just frankly isn't building tanky whatsoever. It's kind of a bummer to watch, actually. It's a, it's but a standoff now. A, a Samsung <laughs> is doing the right thing. Well, next Dragon, that would be their fifth up in about a minute 30 now. That's going to be pressure. Oh, here we go. Sivirol activated, event rising, blocks people off, Wraith kind of on his own. Here comes Kube doing a lot of damage to Pilot before Pilot condemns him away. He's still alive for now. Nice equalizer to slow people down, turning in, but the double kill comes in anyway for Crown, taking out Chaser and Pilot. Oh, GBM getting really low as well, too. And there you go. There's the pick. They actually used the Flash Rune Prison just to get on top of Vayne right there, blow all those abilities. You can see the burst, so... They're going to wrap around the backside of this turn oh. right now, see if they can pick up a few more. Yeah, Event Horizon not really doing too much, and GBM in a lot of trouble. Headbutt pulverizes to kill on Vega first, then why not? One more, another double kill for Crown. This LeBlanc is ridiculously strong right now. And here we go, just pushing forward for the inhibitor. This is the right call because you can always just do that Baron afterwards. Yep. We have timing here with two more kills. Janair getting a little bit greedy in their defense and not respecting Samsung's ability just to dive them under the tower. Fury and Crown really combining for a lot of kills in this game. Yeah, Crown especially, man. 7-1-2 and two on the LeBlanc. Really stellar performance on that champion. And now it's Baron time. It is Baron time indeed. A nope. long last. Wraith not even going to be there to tank it. It's up to Eve and his heals. He's going to heal tank the Baron. <laughs> Why not? So. Okay, well now, Baron up, or Dragon up in three seconds. Just take a look at this fight underneath. They have enough minions right there. Uh, Sweet actually pulls the trigger really fast on that Event Horizon. And so they're happy just to continue to attack the turret. There's so many minions that they're not gonna take aggro anytime soon. Yep. And there it is, GBM and the rest of Jin Air actually take a dragon, so they prevent the fifth dragon. Equalizer coming through. It does split up Samsung a little bit. They're trapped in that event horizon as well, but Trace just nearly blown up immediately. Nice head, but pulverized. Wow. GBM was there, and then he wasn't. Fury just flashed into everybody. <laughs> it's a kill for Kuve as well, too. Fury unafraid. I love that about Fury. Yep. Well, goodbye, Trace. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. Another kill for Crown. And Sweet just on the run the entire time, but hey, they're always after his Lucky Charm, so he's used to that. He is. Yep. Well, they're tr chasing his Lucky Charms all the <laughs> way into the base, it turns out. There we go, waiting for those Baron Power minions to get there. And at 37 minutes. Wow, there we go, they got him. <laughs> magically delicious. <laughs> and that is a magically delicious win for Samsung <laughs> as they take out Jin Air in game number one. It was pretty smooth, too. We thought this one might be competitive. Yeah, I like I said, Samsung has come into sets looking good. Yeah. It's their adaptation, and once a few bands hit the board, that it seems like they spend their entire week like working on one style of composition, <laughs> and then they use it, and they're like, yeah, we did it. And then the other team's like, okay, here, have some bands. And then Samsung said, well, we haven't oh, practiced. We didn't plan for this. <laughs> we didn't practice anything else this week. We tried to just perfect this. So they're learning to have that adaptability. So right. they're, they're doing a lot of experimentation with different compositions. Will they be there. able to hold out for an entire best of three this time? We shall see. It's called progress, Monte Cristo. I agree, First, it is progress. That's right, and when we come back, we'll see if Jin Air can make any progress and tie things up.